Now we move on to the first central curve that we need in macroeconomics for the short and medium run, and this is the IS curve, where IS stands for investment is equal to savings. The point of departure here is that we know from the goods market that uh, income is equal to consumption of the households plus investment of firms plus governmental expenditures. And now the question is, what happens if the interest rate changes? In the previous chapter, we talked about what happens when government expenditures uh, change. So that leads to the multiplier effect and things like that. But now we ask what happens when the interest rate changes. We can again illustrate this with a graph or two graphs, where we have in the first diagram here, the goods market and the goods market equilibrium, where demand is on the vertical axis and production income on the horizontal axis. Again, we have the 45 degree line along which there are all the equilibria, all the possible equilibria, where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate income and aggregate output. Now we have this equation here for aggregate demand and we have the goods market equilibrium at the point where the two curves here intersect. Now we assume that the interest rate increases. So there is a shift actually of the aggregate demand curve downwards where we would have that the demand curve then intersects with the 45 degree line at the lower level of production or income. So this then means that we have different equilibria here along which the goods market is cleared, but they appear with different interest rates. So we can then de uh, plug actually these uh, points into the diagram below, where we have that this point here is associated with a higher interest rate actually, and a higher level of uh, aggregate income and aggregate demand and aggregate production for that matter. And this income here is associated with a higher interest rate and a lower level of income, demand and output. Now we could do this for different points and what we would get in the lower diagram is a downward sloping curve in the space of the interest rate and income, where whenever interest rate is, the interest rate is high, income would be low because for a high interest rate, firms do not invest that much. If investments are low, then income would be lower. Households would not consume that much. We have a standard multiplier effect if we move from one equilibrium to the other. And if the interest rate is low, by contrast, firms would invest a lot and that would lead uh, to higher incomes. Households would spend more and so on and so forth. So output and income uh, would be higher. So this diagram here depicts the IS curve, where for a high interest rate, output and income uh, are low, and for a low interest rate, output and income are high. So to summarize, the IS curve describes the relation between the interest rate and output when the goods market is in equilibrium. And we have that if the interest rate rises, output falls in the end. Uh, and the uh, chain by which this happens is that a higher interest rate leads to a decrease in investment. This leads to a decrease in aggregate demand, which decreases income. This in turn decreases consumption and investment according to the multiplier effect and so on and so forth. So we would get in the end a lower income level and the IS curve is downward sloping. And the slope of the IS curve itself depends on how strongly investment reacts to the interest rate. So if investment reacts quite strongly to the interest rate, the IS curve would be comparatively flat. That would be the situation depicted in the left diagram here, which means that if the interest rate changes slightly, investment changes quite strongly and therefore um, income and output change quite strongly. And by contrast, if investment barely reacts to changes in the interest rate, we would get a comparatively steep IS curve, here the right diagram, where a, a large change in, in the interest rate is required for a quite small change in income and uh, output to be uh, induced by this change uh, in the interest rate. 
so up to now we have used linear functions actually to describe consumption and investment and so on and this would imply that also the is curve is linear but in reality of course it might be the case that it is not linear and actually the responsiveness of investment uh, to the interest rate itself would depend on the level of the interest rate so in this case in the realistic case the is curve would be non-linear and bulged towards uh, the origin where when uh, the interest rate is um, comparatively high, then small changes of the interest rate do not induce uh, large changes in uh, output and income. And by contrast, if the interest rate is comparatively low, small changes in the interest rate can have strong effects on uh, income and investment. So a realistic IS curve would be downward sloping, but not in a linear manner. So this concludes the description of the IS curve which is a downward sloping curve in the space of the interest rate and income uh, output. And it basically depicts the equilibrium in the goods market for a changing interest rate.